Originally a novel by Richard Adams published in 1972, Watership Down is the tale of a group of rabbits who are forced to flee their former home and find a new place to live. Although seemingly child-friendly, the story is anything but, due to its mature themes and liberal use of death and bloodshed. In fact, the 1978 animated film would go on to scar people forever when they thought they tuned in for a fun cartoon and instead witnessed a rabbit almost get strangled to death. Despite this, or perhaps because of it, the film has become a classic. Fast forward to 2018, and we now have a new version as told through a BBC miniseries. The question, of course, is whether this new version can hold up to the old one. Well, folks, as someone who just watched the two back-to-back, -back, allow me to give my thoughts on how well this new series holds up. First of all, I thought that the voice acting and overall sound quality was really good. With an all-star cast including James McAvoy, John Boyega, and Ben Kingsley, you would hope that the performances would be top-notch, and fortunately they were, with the characters feeling like they were very well cast. Not only that, but through no fault of its own, it can be quite hard to go back and watch the original film due to the grainy sound quality, so having everything in the new version come across nice and clear due to the new tech we have was nice. Another thing that I liked about this new version was that it takes its time to expand upon the material and have more art direction, so to speak. While the original film did a fine enough job with the limited runtime that it had, I think that it rushed to the different story beats way too quickly sometimes without taking the time to breathe. For instance, in the original film, we know that one of the rabbits named Fiverr has visions, but we never really get to see them. Instead, we usually know he is having one because he starts twitching around and freaking out while the action occurs around him. Here, I thought it was cool that whenever he has a vision, we get to see what he is experiencing and it is represented as him being surrounded by events from the future playing out around him. I like this as I found it to be much more immersive to take part in his abilities. Likewise, though I won't spoil exactly how the series ends, I thought that the moment we see between the two brothers named Hazel and Fiverr was really touching and a nice artistic choice. Though it is something not in the book, I thought it made sense within what we know of the characters and was a good expansion upon their relationship. Speaking of which, I like that the series took some time to show off more of the interactions between the rabbits and who they are. While the 1978 version did have stuff like Bigwig argue with Hazel by his leadership, these interactions usually felt brief and only skin deep. Here though, I felt like I knew a bit more about the different relationships and where the characters stand with one another. For instance, I felt like I understood more about Hazel, and not only his position as a reluctant leader, who we are shown sometimes unsure of what to do, but also his rocky relationship with Fiverr, who he obviously loves, but feels that like he struggles to always believe. Likewise, I felt like Bigwig and why he acts the way he does made more sense, since it is less about him being contrarian, but more about him having trouble following the orders of someone else when he feels he can do things himself. I also liked that while most of the female rabbits were just kind of in the background of the original, here we get to see them actually have some lines and interact with the males as they paired off. Finally, the last thing I liked is that contrary to popular belief, this version seems to usually follow the book a bit more closely. For instance, many people feel that this new version is too child friendly due to taking things out, such as the scene near the beginning where a rabbit named Violet is snatched up by a hawk. But the thing is, that that scene wasn't even from the book to begin with. Likewise, I also found it weird how in the 1978 version, we get a few scenes of our heroes trying to free some female rabbits from a hutch in a farm, only to never really succeed, and we then seemingly drop the idea. In the new version, we see this plan carried through, and the female rabbits join our heroes at Watership Down. Now, while there are plenty of positives I found with the miniseries, that is not to say that there weren't any negatives. For starters, and most obvious, are the visuals. While the original film was a work of 2D animation, the new series is done using CGI that has been described as anything from soulless and clunky to outdated. While I do feel that you get used to the visuals as you continue watching the show, that still doesn't excuse the fact that some characters look way worse than others, and that some animations, such as the rabbits biting through things, look really badly done. Another thing that I disliked is that the series does feel a bit 
tamer than the original. While, as I said before, some of that does come from added stuff that wasn't in the book, other stuff, such as a lack of blood when Bigwig is being strangled to death in a snare, does feel weird. I mean, this is a very violent thing that is happening to this creature, and you would expect the graphics to reflect this, so not seeing blood does ruin the scene a bit. Finally, while I said it before that the new miniseries usually follows the book more closely than the original film, it does still have some unnecessary changes. One example, for instance, is that in the book, when the rabbits flee Cowslips Warren, they take with them a male rabbit named Strawberry, who does his part to fit into the group and try to act as a representative at Ephrafa. In the new version, though, Strawberry is instead a female rabbit that, while she does still do her part, also serves as a new point of conflict since soon the male rabbits are fighting over her. It is changes like this here and there that make the flow of the story feel different and not always for the better. Overall, I would say that while not perfect, the new Watership Down miniseries is pretty enjoyable and deserves more credit than what I have seen people give it. While I understand the 1978 version is a classic, it still has some flaws such as a rush story and tendency to not stick to the source material that the new series actually does better. Don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that I am saying the new miniseries is the definitive version you should watch, while the other is forgotten, but that it would be nice if people took off the nostalgia goggles and appreciated this new version for what it tries to do. In the end, I think that a lot of work was put into this, and it is a fun experience that I recommend. But hey, that's just my opinion, and remember, don't take anything I say too seriously, after all, I'm just a wannabe reviewer. Thanks for watching.